Hi, hello, my name is Ollie Bliss and this is my channel Book Draw. For those who don't know, I enjoy looking at queer fiction and occasionally I create images out of it. Today I'm doing a wrap up for May. May has just gone by way too quickly. <laughs> I like, I, I yeah, <laughs> I was starting watching other people doing wrap ups and I was like, ah, yeah, we're in June now. I really, really need to get on it because <laughs> I, I have not. Um, I feel like I'm all over the place at the moment. Um, I don't know what's going on. It feels like life is just going fast at the moment and I just haven't managed to keep a hold of everything that's going on. Um, but it's all good. It's all fun and positive. So anyway, I <laughs> so starting with a book which I've wanted to read for quite a long time and I have been, I, I have thought this book is called something different from what it actually what, uh, is or was. Is was? I don't know if that's right. Basically, I always thought this was called Maurice, but it's actually called Morris. And it's by E.M. E. M. Forrester. So, because uh, I did this as an audio book, which I'm kind of glad I did. Otherwise, this could have been a, a kind of embarrassing moment. Maybe this isn't coming out right at all anyway. But I always thought uh, this book was called Maurice. Um, and I just kind of had that in my mind for uh, such a long time. Uh, but it's not. It's, it, it's Morris. But basically, this is one of those books which is kind of considered as a, uh, a gay book. British classic, I would say, in, in the sense of where it's set and the characters involved, in terms of the way people have spoken to me, like, have you, um, have you read this book? Uh, but, um, and I'm just thinking, like, when people have t told me, I, I feel like they did say Maurice instead of Morris. I, I don't know. Anyway, um, <laughs> I need to get over that, really, don't I? Uh, but, <laughs> so basically, you start by seeing him uh, as a public school kid, Morris meets Clive when they're um, growing up and he introduces him into kind of same-sex relations between Greek men back in the day. And this sparks an awakening between the pair of them. Um, however, over the course of their friendship and bond grows, they end up kind of separating and going different ways. Clive has more internalised shame than Morris potentially. So he deals with a lot of shame within the book as well um, and Clive ends up going off and getting married and the outcome of that um, has this impact on Morris and it's about him trying to gain a sense of his identity and his morality in um, the confines of the, the generation that they were a part of. Um, what I would say is really positive about this book is that it has a hopeful end um, but I did also have a bit of distance from this book in terms of read books about kind of self-loathing and shame and I'm kind of over reading those narratives particularly with regards to gay men like I'm, I'm done with that narrative like I've, I've led <laughs> that experience from when I was like uh, through uh, 12 to 16 where I had that awakening it was a very brief time I've been lucky enough uh, growing up in the time that I have being on the brink of the noughties where there was just a change which made it more open and easy to come out. I mean, I was surrounded by a lot of um, homophobia at that time, particularly where I was living, and it's partly the reason why I went to a college outside from my uh, local town because of that. Um, but I managed to get through it without the sense of self-shame and self-loathing. I never had that, even though I knew other people thought homosexuality was totally wrong. I actually liked the way I felt. I I knew it made me different and part of that felt exotic in some way but also I never felt like it was wrong. I never had internalised it in that way to make me feel I am wrong. I knew that people didn't like me because of the way I was thinking and feeling but I didn't necessarily think that it was a fundamental flaw in who I was as a person. But in this book, there is that discussion. Um, and what I liked about it, uh, particularly because of the, uh, when this book was actually produced, there is this kind of hopeful element to it towards the end. Anyway, <laughs> um, the next book I want to talk about is Ghost War, which is by Sarah Moss. This is actually my first Sarah Moss uh, novel which I've ever read. She's one which has been like all over booktube and I think that's kind of the uh, part of the reason that has put me off. It's like she's had a lot of hype around her but um, it's just because this one was available through Borrowbox, through my library and I actually saw that it wasn't that long a read. I thought, why not? 
Um, and I actually really, really enjoyed the book. It's, uh, it's kind of haunting in a lot of ways. Um, and it's a narrative which has actually stayed with me, even though it's such a slim read. Um, the impact of it is really quite powerful and it has this kind of lingering sense on me. The main focus of the story is through the perspective of Sylvie and her relationship with her father Bill, who is a difficult father, um, who is an abusive character um, in different ways. And uh, it, the, the focus of the book is around that relationship. But Bill's very interested in ancient Britain and they go up to um, Northumbria um, to have this experience where they get to live in the kind of life and roles of that time. And it does explore gender roles within that period and that ha how that has an impact on the way people perceive current day. And there's this other character who kind of questions and challenges some of that. But because Sylvie is in this kind of uh, enmeshed um, abusive relationship with it, within her family, um, she's suddenly being uh, challenged to view their relationship w with a different lens. Um, and it's it's really interesting to see how that builds and blossoms into something that's really, really tense and um, gives it this really great sense of fear for like your life um, towards the end of it. And it, it kind of feels like it almost sweeps the rug out from underneath you because you are there yearning for Sylvie to kind of stand up for herself, but you can kind of see how she's been put and conditioned into a role that she is trying to kind of break out from but doesn't have the confidence to. Um, and um, it's just gripping <laughs> and it just gets more and more intense towards the end because there are these different things that are happening around uh, where they are placed that make you kind of just want to pick her up out of the situation and run away and take her to safety. Um, and I, I think that was the thing that really surprised me with the book, because I, I went into reading it with zero expectations um, and left it <laughs> feeling like I'd been through a really traumatic experience. It certainly did a great job of being uh, a rich read, but I'd kind of give warning that it's like it's an uncomfortable experience through it um uh, but uh, just a very well put together piece of writing the next story which i want to talk about is actually a memoir um which i read as a buddy read with the wonderful julia um and this is by tara westover so this uh is a book which i picked up over at Cheltenham festival um Cheltenham literature festival last year um, and have only just really got around to uh, reading through it. But, whew, wow, uh, as a memoir, it, what makes this so much more impactful is knowing that it's true. Um, and it's really interesting. This is a person who grew up in a really rural, isolated um, place with uh, parents who are Normans and um, uh, taught their kids at home. You could say taught really loosely. Um, she basically helped them out on um, uh, picking up uh, scrap from a junkyard and um, they self-educated themselves in their free time. There was really no structure to them learning. Uh, the mum was a kind of herbalist with um, home-based remedies. They didn't have access to doctors. They, she wasn't actually like um, put into a school or anything. She taught herself how to do algebra and she manages to pass the test in order to take her on to college. And her journey is just so powerful and terrifying. The number of times that the whole family should have potentially died because of the situations that they were in <laughs> and the lack of um, the, like, medical support that they had around them is horrifying, it really is. Um, but somehow she manages to get herself a degree. She goes on to Cambridge and she uh, becomes a doctor and just learning all the different things that she's up against and how she manages to triumph through those things. She is the youngest of seven kids um, and it's really interesting in terms of looking at the dynamics of the family members in terms of how they actually kind of not necessarily endorse the behaviour of 
um, one of these brothers, but how they are, uh, in a sense, complicit into some of the, um, the things that happen, and how she has to remove herself from that situation, and then what she does in, in terms of how she tries to go back and challenge it, and the impact of that struggle, and how that it has an impact on her entire family structure and her relationship and bond with them. It's all really messy. Um, but in terms of reading it and seeing all the things that she goes through, is really it just leaves you going like, wow, how how are you so together as a person? Because I've seen a couple of interviews with her afterwards, and you just kind of go, wow, well done you, you're. You're amazing. Well, one of the reasons I wrote the book is because of the gaslighting I experienced from my parents, their continual denial of things that were happening, like with my brother. And so I guess for me, I would say I love my parents. Um, I believe they're good people. But I think, the, I think the tragedy here isn't that bad people do bad things. I think the tragedy is what good people do to keep secrets. And what I liked about the, what she does within her writing is she has tried to um, fact-checked some of her things with her siblings and she calls out where she's not entirely gained consensus on the things that actually happened and she writes additional notes about those moments. So you get a sense of her really trying to give an authentic representation of her experience or of her lived life or in terms of how she at least remembers it and she acknowledges where there is difference in that and I think in terms of from a historic perspective and from an academic perspective, you can see all those influences on her. I think one of the biggest kind of themes within the book, in the title itself, Educated, is that education is transformational. I think she demonstrates that like through the process of knowledge that can be turned into something that is truly powerful and regardless of your circumstances and your actual uh, um, liberty that you have, through that process of um, knowledge you can break free from those things it is really inspiring and hopeful in that sense but it's also beneath it something that is really really menacing and just quite dark really um but it's a very challenging read but uh, uh, but also a, a read which you kind of feel positive about by the end of it um, but you also kind of just go are you okay? Like, are you actually okay now in your life? Um, so yeah, it was just a really cool book. I mean, cool is probably the wrong word, but a really interesting read and just um, made you kind of feeling left going, whoa, <laughs> like what has happened to you and how did you come out so resilient afterwards? You just have mad kudos to her. It's just like, yeah. Bloody hell. Finally, I want to talk about flow. Flow is a really brilliant kind of self-help um, or reflective um, book. It's uh, created by a psychologist. I will add his name because I'm not entirely sure how to say his name, even though I have heard it a couple of times and I will butcher it. But this is a brilliant short read um, and I did it on Audible um, and uh, I think this is like an exclusive version where they actually have case studies and they've got different actors doing the narratives from those bits, but also he's reading and talking through his ideas. Um, and that was a really interesting way to gain this kind of insight to where he was coming from. And you get a sense of his emotion behind um, the things that he has learned through this process of learning and uh, monitoring and measuring. Uh, what he's gained from it. But flow is basically about how you maximize your productivity in life. And it goes through all these different kind of elements of your life. It like lists them all out and it's how you can apply uh, flow within them to make it more beneficial and rewarding for yourself and how you can gain a kind of richer experience. In terms of understanding what flow is, it's like it, you have to identify and know your goal first of all. You then have to be able to monitor that goal in some way so you can see your progress against it. You then have to feel like you can handle the activity and you have a certain amount of skill in place to manage the expectations of that activity. Part of it's also about feeling that you your attention isn't split or taken away from other things. You then enter into a space where you 
don't feel like you have an awareness of the outside around you. And this is something I certainly experience when I am doing creative activities such as drawing or stuff on the computer where you are so absorbed in the task and you don't have other things around you distracting you in some way. He said as well, a part of a big part of flow is where you feel like you are on the edge of your ability in terms of the way you are striving forward. And I think that's really interesting in terms of where you are in a point where you feel actually challenged, but it's not overwhelming. And he talks about it in the sense of that you almost lose like self-consciousness. You just become a part of that activity. And I thought that, that well, there's something really lovely in the way that he describes that. Um, and it, almost how time can like lose meaning for you. So that's the kind of general structure of what flow is. He goes into it and into methodical steps for you. But then what he does, which is really like useful, is he then applies it to lots of different situations. And that might just be through the process of like cooking or doing um, like sim uh, simple tasks through to when you apply it, if you were like a surgeon or something, and or if you're playing games, it even looks at your love life and aspects of how you can benefit from applying flow in your life uh, to all areas of your life. And I, I have felt slightly transformed by the process of listening to it and it makes me take stock and consider why I am procrastinating or not like delivering more on a certain task and because I do think that when I actually break it down and look at it I might be missing a goal in place or I might not have monitored effectively against it and it's those kind of simple principles and it, it, this helps you realize where those gaps are it's really, really good at providing some structure in yourself. So if, if you're the type of person who wants to gain self-improvement in some way, um, I would really recommend this book. It's because it's, it's quite quick as a read, but it's one of those reads that you might want to go back to or you might want to make some simple like flashcards for yourself just to kind of remind yourself of the principles. But I would genuinely say you do kind of need to listen through the entirety of the, the book to gain a full understanding of what it's proposing to you and how you actually apply it to yourself. But yeah, I, I really did this book. I thought it was great. Anyway, that's enough from me. I have gone way over on my wrap up again. Let me know if you've read any of these. Tell me how your reading month has been. Um, if any of these interest you in some way or uh, you have gained different insights, let me know. I'd love to have a, continue the conversations down in the comments below. Um, otherwise, I will just see you all again real soon. Okay, take care. Bye.